This podcast is part of the C-Suite Radio Network, turning the volume up on business. Hey, it's Chris Kirkpatrick with the Executive Job Search Secrets Podcast. And for today's episode, I'm going to be interviewing uh, a buddy, a business partner, co-founder of Career Next with me. Um, and his name is Matt Beckley. So let's roll the theme music and then we will get into the interview. We all know most executive level positions are not posted or advertised. So the big question is this, if those 100K plus jobs are not posted or advertised, how do you go about your job search in a way so you can find the right companies, connect with the right people and land your next ideal opportunity as quickly as possible and without compromise? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Chris Kirkpatrick and welcome to Executive Job Search Secrets. All right, so welcome to the podcast, uh, Matt. Uh, this is kind of exciting. I've been wanting to talk to you, as you know, for a long time uh, to to just talk about your experience. You know, we've known each other for how long now? A year and a half, almost. Yeah, about a year and a half. Yeah. So, if you don't mind, what I'd love to do uh, just by starting is just kind of have you talk a little bit about um, how we met because you were kind of in a, a unique spot at the time and mm-hmm. and reached out to me and and we since become friends and business partners and have written a book together and and done a lot of fun things. But if you don't mind, I'd love to kind of go back to the beginning and and kind of start from where you were when you initially reached out and what you were looking for and and kind of how everything evolved from there. Yeah, I I think um, just from from the perspective of providing a little bit of background, you know, I've got 20, 25 years of sales and marketing experience within uh, all types of medical technology uh, as well as enterprise software companies. But you know, it was uh, uh, a really kind of unique experience of always working within startup companies as well as within Fortune 500 companies. Um, and uh, about a year and a half ago, I had uh, recognized that I was no longer being fulfilled in my career. And I needed to make a transition. I wanted to make a transition back into the medical device space, the med tech space. Um, but the problem I had is I've been out of the business for about eight years at that point. Um, I've been selling technology, been selling software, but anyone that's been in one industry that has made a transition into another industry and wants to, or wants to make, you know, has got experience within one industry and wants to transition out of that and into someplace else, it's easy to get pigeonholed by interviewers. Mm-hmm. Uh, by managers because they think, well, if you're not in this space, then the value you can provide um, isn't as great as if you were. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I have a unique perspective because I've always been someone that has um, challenged myself to grow and just followed my passions. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so in answer to your question, about a year and a half ago, I recognized that I wanted to get back to the med device space. And uh, we started talking about this unbelievable need in the marketplace to help executives uh, that want that want to transition and position and brand themselves and interview and know how to use technology like LinkedIn. Uh, I, I hadn't had to interview for a position in something like 17 years wow. is because of, you know, it was because the friends that I had made, that made the relationships that I had, there'd always been a position that was created for me. So this was the first time in my career where I felt like I needed a little bit of help. Mm-hmm. And I recognized very quickly that uh, the, the interviewing landscape, the job seeking landscape, uh, the job hiring process really had changed dramatically in mm-hmm. so many facets. So, Yeah, uh, no, th- I think that's awesome. Now, I mean, and just to kind of touch on that a little more, I mean, you were going through a significant transition because you were in the medical device space for a long time yeah. and, and for wildly, about 18 years, wildly yeah. successful. And then, uh, because of personal relationships and opportunity and desire to grow and take on a new challenge and all these different things, you, you left that space for, uh, just the fine kind of a finance, a, uh, software, uh, investment space, yep. uh, estate planning space. And, you know, I think like, all of us, um, there are just things that happen in life where mm-hmm. you go, you know, what's the point of mm-hmm. doing what I'm doing if I don't understand this? And that's right. really what happened to me because you haven't gone through the Great Recession, having you right. with your background oh, and, yeah. and whatnot. You know, you know, we all, everyone lost money. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, after been someone that's used to making a fair amount of money on on a regular basis, what's you know, it just there had to be a better way. 
Right. You now, in the med device space, you know, the clinicians are always saying, what, where's the evidence-based medicine? Show me that first. Yeah. And when it came to investing and it came to technology, it's like, there's none of that. And it's yeah. like, I didn't know it. And I needed and I wanted help. And yep. uh, I had an opportunity to open the door and learn. And, and it was a fun ride. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm now much better educated. I've got different experiences. I've got... Uh, um, you know, I'm a big believer and appreciator of diversity of experience when it comes to uh, hiring people now, hiring yeah. other leaders. Mm-hmm. Um, what I learned uh, has been amazing. And, um, but the problem that I had is that I'm now the job seeker looking to get back to the medical device industry. And I realized that it was like I had zero experience. Right. And that's after an eight to nine year period of being out of the industry. Yeah. I was right? out of the industry like, for eight years after having 18 years experience yeah. with some of the most recognizable brands and startup technologies yep. out there. And it was like I was starting at square one. So talk to me about that then because there's, I, I, and I know this because we've talked about this in great depth, yeah. you know, but for all the people listening, what what were your biggest concerns or fears um, internally? Because I think that that is a big challenge, you know, with with job seekers in general, right. regardless of whether they're changing industries or not. But I think you were an extreme example of this in the sense that it is such a such a leap of faith, if you will, or such a hurdle to to get over because you knew you were capable. You know, you're completely capable. You know, you're completely qualified. Yet. It's not a matter of what you know. It's a matter of how you package yourself, how you get yourself in front of the right people, how you build those conversations, and mm-hmm. kind of how you go down that process. So what were your big fears around that, and how did you kind of start to navigate the process? You know, I think every, we're all in our own head. Mm-hmm. I think this first thing to say. It's, it's um, you know, what I felt like uh, out of the gate, one of the greatest fears or unknowns or challenges, however you want to label it, was um, how do I answer the question? Why did I make the change? Mm -hmm. And how do I answer it in a way that the interviewee or the interviewer goes, that makes a lot of sense. I can understand why you'd want to do that. Mm -hmm. And that experience that you obtained is amazing and complements what you've done before. You you, you could be great for where we're going. Um, So it really came down to how do I best frame and explain the, the moves that I made um, how do I best brand myself? Right. Um, recognizing that opening the door and finding the opportunities, uh, the landscape has changed dramatically as we've talked about in the book and we talk about, you know, on through the podcasts and, and other yeah. elements. Um, but the, while I had a network mm-hmm. of friends, a smaller network over, you know, eight or nine years past. Sure. That network has you know, become smaller and smaller Compressed. and smaller. Uh, I knew that I was going to need some help yeah. in, in reopening that door. At least I believed that I would. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, I, I uh, did a pretty good job of maintaining some of those relationships. But like most of our listeners, you know, we all can do a much better job. Sure. Keeping, the fl- keeping that flame lit. And mm-hmm. when, when we're busy working, we tend to lose touch. And I would say that you know, with that, that's inevitable. Um, I think one of the areas that you did a great job, and we talked about this in, in depth as you were going through the process, but is is when you reach back out and try to rekindle or respark or you know yeah. get that flame going again for those right. conversations and those relationships. Right. It's how you go about it and how you have those conversations. Right. And it, as we as we mentioned in the book, we mentioned um, you know we've talked a lot about there are different types of relationships. Right. Absolutely. You've got those friends in your network Mm -hmm. that you can pick up the phone and you know a year or two have gone by or you know whatever you talk to them maybe every once a quarter once a year Mm -hmm. you pick up the phone and because of the relationship you have you pick up almost where you left off and it's okay to be vulnerable with them Mm -hmm. and then you've got two other groups where you know you've got you know that are professional we respect each other and then the other you know further on where you kind of had you worked in this you work together you know each other's name you know you remember when yeah and those two groups are very difficult uh, or, and uncomfortable, I think, to rekindle relationships Absolutely. because uh, now me being a sales and marketing guy, I probably had it easier than, than I think m- many sure. people because I'm not afraid to get out there and yep. try new things and, and say, say whatever. And it's a bit more natural. It's a bit more natural. Apologize, you know, do the thing. That being said, it's uncomfortable. Right. And, I, you know, having coached and educated 
um, a number of our clients mm -hmm. um, over the, over the year um, years. It, it, you know, it we know it, that for some, it's it's like sw maybe swimming for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, getting in the pool or yeah. I fear heights. I mean, it's fear of being on stage and public speaking. It's that kind of fear that we experience, or yeah. some people experience, that makes this process very challenging. Yeah. Now, now I love this because. You know, while you're going back into the med tech industry now, right? And and that's awesome, and that's ultimately where you want to go. We're still partnered up on this, and and I'm really excited for just the direction. I'm excited for you because you know we've talked about this a lot, and I've seen uh, the excitement, and just I've heard it in your voice how excited you are to be going back into this kind of game changing technology, and that's mm -hmm. that's really what you're all about. As you go through that transition. And as you've thought about that, what would you say the hardest part of the job search was for you? You know, because, you know, yeah, it, 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 uh, it, was, it was not a small uh, leap for you. No. Uh, you know, I think that there were – I wouldn't boil it down to just one thing. There's three, there's three elements, but distinct elements, okay. three challenges. Perfect. One is how best to rep myself, represent myself on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Resume. Yeah. How do I best formulate and explain – and highlight what's most relevant today. Yeah. Uh, number two, how do I use and leverage technology mm -hmm. out there to help me find those opportunities and those companies that would really be the best fits for me? Um, you know, how has the recruiting landscape changed? Mm. You know, head with headhunters and whatnot. So that's bucket really number two. You know, LinkedIn wasn't even around. <laughs> it didn't exist, you know, yeah. before. I was on it, but, you yeah, know, yeah. over the years, but I didn't know how to use it. Sure. Know? And then uh, the third part was just interviewing. It's, okay. And it's, it's not, you know, having hired hundreds of people throughout the year, interviewed hundreds of people, as well as have had interviewed for some jobs. Yeah, sure. Um, it's like anything else. Like, a, I think we talk about it on, you know, a number of different fronts, the golf golf swing right yeah it, you know you could you could have been a good golfer at one point or you can play a good round mm -hmm. um, but if you haven't played in a while uh, getting back out there for the first time you're gonna make some mistakes yeah and you're for it's, sure. it's not gonna feel normal and boy I tell you what the psychological aspect of not only interviewing but the yeah. psychological aspect of knowing how to spend my time efficiently mm. and and feeling like I'm, I'm, I'm doing the right things on a day-to-day -day basis that are moving the needle uh, versus uh, doing things that waste time. You have a, a, a saying that I, I think you created. I don't know, but it was. Yeah, I'll let you remember. You know, articulate it. But it was. It's. A, it's a saying that uh, I think uh, it's. It's a that we need to live by. That we need to acknowledge. Remember what that was? I don't know. I have a lot of like one-liners. Can you start me off? It, it had. It has. It has. <laughs> so, so I can't say it the way you do. But it was. It was where um, you spend all. You spend. A bunch of time in the, in the morning throughout the day, and then you recognize that you know surfing the web and yeah. going to LinkedIn, and all of a sudden, oh, you know, browser blackout, browser blackout, browser blackout. That's yeah, what that's so yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's and that's the reality is this technology. I think one of one of the things I think is really important, you know, when you're running a business or whether you're looking for a job or whatever, is that there's in the world as it is today it, of all the technology evolving everything's changing i mean if you, you we have this conversation 6 months from now it's probably going to be different how right. you you know other things are going to be developed and evolve and, and whatever and with technology just because you can doesn't mean you should right mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things on linkedin you want to make sure with any technology but specifically talking about this with linkedin you could do a lot of things on there and you can waste a lot of time and you could be really ineffective. Mm -hmm. So when you're on there, you know, you don't want to fall into that browser blackout mindset well, and just be like, look up and six hours later, you're like, well, I felt like I, I, I was, I did a lot of things today. Right. Well, don't mistake productivity with activity, you know, and that's, that's hundred percent, you know, hundred percent. Um, there's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, that is, um, yeah. The other thing that I think, you know, very successful people, um, like the, the ones we work with, mm -hmm. are not just looking for a job. I mean, no right. one's really looking for a job. Sure. And that's that was the, that was the other thing about this whole scenario for me is getting really really clear about what is it that I wanted to do, mm. who did I want to do it with, 
what industries, what companies are really going to allow me to, to wake up every morning and love what I do? Um, I wasn't, I knew I could get a job. Mm -hmm. Um, and to a certain extent, you know, there, there were a couple jobs that I had that kind of were exciting, but they weren't like fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Um, there were other reasons why I took the roles. Sure. Um, but you know, someone who's 48 years old now looking, um, to, 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 to work for maybe another 10, 15, maybe even 20 years, depending on. You know what happens. What presents itself. Yeah, what, sure. present, what opportunities present sure. themselves. Sure. Yeah, I really wanted to be fulfilled, mm -hmm. and um, and I was searching. You know, I understood the process, having worked in this industry with you and learned this industry with you, and having coached mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, job seekers. Um, I knew what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. I knew how to go about doing it. Right. Um, but when it's you. And you're living the experience. <laughs> yeah, it is a totally different um, process, and that's really why, when we were talking about writing the book, I was so passionate about that because I wanted to do it when we did it because I could talk about it from two different perspectives. Right. You know, the the, the scientific academic approach to this is how things need to be done. This is mm -hmm. the process. This is the five step system. These are these are the activities that need to be done in order mm -hmm. to get the results. But what does it really feel like while right. you're going through it? Yeah. That's that's tough. That, that's always the hardest part. Yeah. So so in speaking to that, like you know, you and I obviously have a, a really unique relationship in this context. You came in initially, and while you were trying to figure things out, we worked hand in hand, and you know, worked together on a lot of different projects. And right. you learned this industry inside out, right? So as when you then. Kind learned of, it from you because you'd been doing it for a couple of years. Sure, exactly. And, and, but while you while you were learning it, or let, let's say after you were in it and learned it for a little while, once you gain that clarity of, okay, this is the direction I want to go, it still, you know, what what there was a lot of discomfort for you in that in that process, or not maybe not a lot, but there were some. There was some there, discomfort. There were some, so. and I think knowing, I, I think because I, I learned. Um, you know, it didn't take very long to figure out that I didn't know what I didn't know. I mean, sure. that in a number of different ways. As I got educated and as I started learning from you and I started mm -hmm. coaching other executives yeah. and you know, making career changes, it's, it's really easy to see it from the outside. It's mm -hmm. really easy to feel the emotional experience and, yeah. and, and understand the pain that people are going through and mm -hmm. uh, also see all the things that you know, are holding them back. And yeah. it's like, to a certain extent, it's like, well, I don't... How do you not see that in some people, right? How can you? How do you not realize that? Yeah. Um, but it's it's like anything else. You, you, you can't you can't see yourself sometimes. Right. You know, other people can see what's going on, and then having lived the experience and you know applying the the processes and the techniques and, and you know, there's always setbacks, right? There's always yeah. things never happen the way that they're supposed to happen. And every job <laughs> seeker is gonna. You know, is going to have a different experience. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, some of our clients find opportunities, their greatest opportunities in a month, two months, three months. Mm -hmm. For others, it can take six months to a year or more. Mm -hmm. And it really depends on an individual circumstance and what, what they're accept, how much time they're allocating to this. We can't mm -hmm. predict when they're going to find the right fit, the right connection for them. How much time and where they're spending their time. And, and if, yeah. I find a lot of times, and this is, it's no different with this than as it is with growing business. A lot of times people s spend their time in activities, and I think a lot of startups fail, uh, small startups fail because people spend their time where they're comfortable, mm -hmm. not where it needs to be spent, right? right? Well, it's lack of focus and discipline yeah. is really what it comes down to. Yeah. Businesses, whether it's a big business, a startup business, or an entrepreneur, um, it's always a lack of focus. And, and it's understanding where the results are going to come from, yep. right? And having the metrics around those and understanding, like, what, what do I need to do to be successful, right? And being patient, which is not my yeah, strength. Yeah, I you're mean, really it, good at that. That's, you know, that's, <laughs> what someone says, you know, they ask the interview question, well, help me understand, you know, your biggest challenges, your weaknesses, you know, being patient is, is always one of mine. That's yep. probably why I've been so good in sales and marketing throughout the sure. years is that I've got a sense of drive and initiative yep. that you can't create. That being said... Um, you know, when you're the one looking for an opportunity and not creating the opportunity, you know, it requires patience mm. and, um, that, that, you know, not getting in your own head throughout that process on a day to day, week to week basis is, 
is 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 always a challenge in having working with a coach, someone that can kind of be there and kind of you can talk to and you go, hey, you're doing all the right things. Mm. You know, it sounds like the, it sounds like uh, the conversation went well. You might think about this. You might think about that. This mm-hmm. could be a better way of saying that. That that is where the value of, of coaching, I think, comes in. Um, way beyond here are the steps, here are the processes, here are the tools that you need to have. Here's the uh, the digital course that you need to have. Here's what yep. you need to read. Here's what you need to say. Here's how you need to answer it. Having someone that actually actually can be there as a sounding board, sure, and you can connect with mm-hmm. that knows the process and understands the process yeah. is invaluable. Well, and that's why I love to do things the way that we do it, right? Because like that's, I, I, that's why I love doing it the way that we do it is I, I love to put the free content out there and have the podcast to be able to help people just think about things a little differently, right? Mm-hmm. It, it starts, it's that you don't know what you don't know and you start to hear things maybe from a different perspective and, and your brain starts processing what you're going through a little differently. Uh, having the book that we're going to be launching here, hopefully within a couple of weeks, we're 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 getting there. It's pretty close. <laughs> um, this this book has taken us forever to get done, but it's going to be amazing once we launch it here in a couple of weeks. But you know, having that and then having courses, you know, that that make it so. You know, the one of the things that I that I learned at the company we worked with before, um, the, my biggest challenge was the clients would come in and spend tens of thousands of dollars sometimes to work with them and they would get a coach but they would get that coach for like an hour maybe two hours a right. week Cookie cutter and, and when you broke yeah. it down that coach it's valuable information but they're repeating a lot of the same stuff to them and ultimately you're paying 250 300 bucks an hour in some situations for that coach to give you templated answers and my mindset was if you're an executive you're a high performer mm-hmm. You know, if you had all that same content in a video and, and then had access to people, to, to, to an expert, a coach, to be able to really help you with your unique circumstances, mm-hmm. that would be far more valuable because you'd be in much more control of your situation. And, and to me, that's important. I, I completely agree with you. Um, you know, one thing as part of the backstory to kind of talk a little bit more about mm-hmm. you know those, those companies out there that do charge 10 15 20 30 40 thousand dollars whatever it is mm-hmm. to help executives find that ideal role um, that's how we that's how we initially met yeah and I connected with you on LinkedIn um, and um, we met we had some discussion we had some conversation we became friends yeah um, but I was actually contemplating whether or not I needed to hire one of these types of companies to get where I needed to be. I'm not afraid of spending money or investing money to get there. Sure. As I learned and as we got to, to work together and collaborate and I got some exposure to this, it was amazing to me. You know, and, you know, not only were there people willing to pay it, but not everyone can afford it. Right. And quite honestly, most people do not need to pay that kind of money. Not for that. That being said... There is a tremendous need for the types of services that we have created, mm-hmm. and you were a big part of that mm-hmm. um, because it's not out there. When you right. can hire, go hire someone to get a resume, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of good resume writers out there. Yeah, absolutely. But if it's not tied into all the other things that we do, the vision, the brand, the vision map, the brand, you know, the, the LinkedIn, the, the targeting, the technology, the interviewing skills, you know, mm-hmm. work, the identifying opportunities in soft I mean it's so not everyone needs everything yeah some people just need certain things mm-hmm. and quite honestly it shouldn't break the bank it, right. sh- it should be something um, that is easily accessible um, to anyone who wants the help and is willing to invest a little bit in themselves mm-hmm. and they're and, and that's what I love most about what we do is w- w- it makes a difference in people's lives and anyone and everyone can afford it mm-hmm. uh, and it's uh, it's not something that you know Costs, you know, three, four, five, six months of mortgage payments, depending upon you know what services you get. Yeah, for sure. So, what do you think going through this now that you've been through the whole process? I mean, starting from being somebody who literally didn't know how to really optimize their LinkedIn profile, didn't yeah. know where you were going to be starting, didn't even know what direction you completely wanted to go when we first met, maybe eighteen months ago. To being where you are now, accepting a job that you you are just absolutely excited about. What what were the biggest surprises for you? You know, as you went through 
that process or what was different than you thought it would be? Uh, for me, uh, one of the, the, the greatest challenges I had was really getting clear about what it is that I wanted to do. Mm. You know, not in terms of the role, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, what industries, mm -hmm. what types of companies, um, who were the people I really, you know, wanted to be around and, and how do I position myself that way? And mm -hmm. um, I think for me that was probably the hardest part is, is just getting clarity uh, about what it is I really wanted. Uh, and then once I had that, how do I best articulate and tie together my whole professional career um, to a story mm. in a very concise but very effective way that allowed me to brand myself as someone who can provide a great return on investment and a tremendous value to their organization. Um, you know, and it was a stepping, it was a process. It was a, it was a process mm -hmm. that you helped create and we worked on and re refined together. Mm -hmm. um, but as you were going through, as it. we were going, as, <laughs> as I was going through it, yeah. and you know, you know this better as well as I do. We changed a lot of what we did sure. along the way because yes. it, it was like, I don't think this is exactly the way it needs to be done. It needs to be mm -hmm. to do this first and this first. Yeah, it's it's like anything else. Systems and processes deliver results when followed. Right. And if the system is not the most efficient, most effective right. way, you've got to be willing to adapt. Right. And. Um, you know, we, we had, we, I had to find the system yeah. that was going to get me to, from where I was and to where I needed to be and wanted to be, which sure. is where I am today. So, well, and it's all about creating that predictable result, right? You don't know yeah. what the time frame is going to be, but I always tell people this isn't necessarily easy. This is not going to be easy. Yeah. And if you go in, I'm a big believer we can deal with anything we expect, right? right? So if you go into your search thinking this is going to be easy or thinking you should have a job in three months, you're going to be, you're going to be depressed be four, a lot of five, pressure. six months and there's going yeah. to be pressure. It's going to be hard to not allow that desperation to seep to the surface, right? Mm -hmm. and, and all these things. Because you've got your timeline. Yeah. And it's a timeline you can't control. Absolutely. We always talk about it as one of my quotes that one of my greatest mentors um, yeah. Um, we talked a lot about was, you know, don't confuse simple with easy. Yeah. It's not. And, and it's true. So with that said though, the process should be simple, right? The it's process, not easy. The it's process simple. is, yeah, it's simple. Yeah. This, it's simple, but it's not easy for everyone to execute by themselves right. without help and support and guidance. Now, I mean, it's, it, it's, it, and because, and, and when you couple that with the emotional yeah. And the psychological aspects yeah. of this, you know, that's really the X factor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, you can learn how to build a house. Right. Right. Yep. Um, but <laughs> if you've ever been building a house as a homeowner who doesn't do it professionally, right, right. And you're designing it and whatnot, you know, you need to have certain rooms and, you know, you need to have the bathrooms here and you need to design it like this. Sure. There's the emotional and the psychological things that happen in that process mm -hmm. that, uh, can drive any family crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so we're coming up on about a half hour now. So, um, I guess what I'd love to kind of finish with is in your process, it, what, where were the areas I should say that you feel now that you've learned them and you can speak to this way better than I can because I haven't gone through now what you've gone through, mm -hmm. where are the areas that, that you find that you, that people would get the most value in working with somebody like me or yeah. you know, whatever? Um, the first part just is getting really clear. Mm -hmm. like if you don't, if you don't know what it is, where you want to be mm -hmm. with crystal clarity, mm -hmm. You're never going to get there. So right at the outset, having a system and having a process that can really help to identify our interests, our needs, our talents, um, and put it down on paper in a way that can help us identify the companies, the types of companies, industries, um, it, items of importance. Mm -hmm. And so that that's the first place. Um, the second the second piece I would say is 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 developing your brand mm -hmm. in a way that's clear. 
And I, you know, I've, I've never met anyone out of all the people that we coached and all the people that I've interviewed, uh, mm -hmm. all the people, all the executives. I don't care if they're CEOs or, <laughs> you know, they're, you know, high-level sales executives. Sure. The one thing I can tell you is that no one that we ran into, that I ran into, has ever been crystal clear on knowing how to articulate their brand right. in a way that really differentiates them. Yep. Uh, and that's powerful when you do. Yeah. You know, it's really powerful when you get it done. And then um, the, the last part, um, it really comes down to the interviewing process because mm -hmm. that's really game time, right? Mm -hmm. There's things that sure. you're doing, but when you're sitting across from someone and an opportunity where it's an opportunity that you really want, yeah. and there's a lot of truths to the process. Um, you, you, know, you wouldn't be in front of them if they didn't see something in your background that, right. um, they, that interests them. Um, and it, there, there does seem to be an imbalance of power, you know, when you're the interviewee versus the interviewer. <laughs> yeah. Um, that being said, being able to remain calm and being able to, to, to know the landscape and know the questions that they're going to ask mm -hmm. um, and, and, and being prepared to know how to most effectively answer them in a way that shows that you're humble, uh, in a way that shows that um, you, you, you put a lot of thought into the response um, in, in a way that's genuine and authentic that allows people to get to know you mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day you know the hiring you the hiring <laughs> the person it's, yeah. it's about the emotional connection that yeah. you make it's not about did I give the best answer right um, the answers need to be good but they really need to be insightful and they need to allow you to connect and you know if you're not no one doesn't if you, you know I don't care if you've you got a lot of experience interviewing people, you're probably going to feel a lot different when you're on the other side. I was going to say, it's a little different when you get when the, the, when the, the, other the side of the desk. Turn, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and those, are the, those are probably the three areas, Chris, that, I, yeah. that were um, the most significant part of the journey. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. Um, I've been wanting to, to get this interview and just have this conversation with you for yep. probably since I, I first started the podcast. And uh, happy to get it done and congrats. I'm so excited that you, you know, have, have landed this position and it's a really cool company. And, uh, so I'm super excited for you and I'm excited for everything that we're doing here moving forward. Cause right. you know, even though you're doing that, you know, we are going to help a lot of people. You're yeah. going to help a lot of people with Korean exactly. Next. And, um, um, we know it works. Yeah. That's absolutely. the most important thing. And, and I think that's important to understand. Like, and that's one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to have you on is because you can speak to it in a way that I can't, you know, like yeah. I, because I can speak to the technicals and I, and I, I understand the process and the things that are important. I coach people through that every single day, but I've never gone through the emotional side that you have of, of being on the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I understand all the ins and outs of, of how to be on the other side of the table, but I, I haven't emotionally connected with what it's like to be in that chair mm -hmm. like you have. And so I think um, you can't replace that. And I, I think you have helped through this journey bring that perspective to me uh, in a way that nobody else has. So I think that's awesome. It's great. Well, thanks so, for having me. You got it, man. Well, all right, guys. Well, I, that's it. If uh, Hopefully uh, you got a lot of value out of this. You love it. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and make sure you go check out careernextagency.com if you have any questions about anything. I'd love to get on the phone with you. Have a conversation. Just kind of learn a little bit more about where you're at. We also have the free master class that you can go to careernextagency.com. Uh, all you have to do is uh, click on the button in the top right that says free master class uh, and, and you can get a free five video course that'll, that'll walk you through. Like if you're going through this process, which I assume you are, uh, actively looking for a job if you're listening to this podcast it's at least at on, on the top of your mind or on your heart I would say go check that out watch those videos and um, I think it'll give you some insight into what you should do next so uh, until next time go out and crush it and we'll talk to you on the next podcast thanks so much for listening as a token of my gratitude I want to give you free access to my executive job search secrets masterclass that'll walk you through the five steps we use with every single one of our clients to help them find their ideal job in, a, in the shortest time possible. If you look below, the link to the masterclass and your free access will be listed in the description of this podcast episode. I hope it makes a huge impact in your job search. Go out there and crush it. I'll see you on the next podcast.
Like what you just heard? Visit c-suiteradio.com. C-Suite Radio, turning the volume up on business.